Hello my friends I welcome you to another episode of Aditya Talks and well today we have Mr Dushyant Mishra and uh, he's going to share a lot of experience today and uh, it's going to be a very interesting and a knowledgeable session um so sir welcome to the show Thank you so much Aditya I must say that uh, I'm mighty impressed uh, to be on this show it's a privilege to be talking to you and thank you for hosting um thank you sir uh, it is my honor that i am able to talk to you um well sir your life is actually full of uh, experiences and research on diverse topics and uh, you are not a usual founder uh, it seems that you have made great research on how we can prepare students to improve the world rather than preparing them for the real world like real world can you please throw some light on your story and detailed background like on your background as well including how you developed this interest in this noble cause of grooming kids to the highest standards thank you so um so i belong to a generation when uh, you know the only options were to either become a doctor or an engineer or maybe a chartered accountant or else you were not considered a bright kid so there were not many options i had to opt, opt for one of these three and i opted for engineering and then the natural course after engineering when i got out was uh, to pursue an mba uh, most of my class was doing that and i also uh, fell in line and pursued that got nice. out uh, did multiple jobs after that uh, at some point i realized that i was not in doing what i was doing it was not making me happy it had become repetitive and that's when i opted out and the idea of unlearn was born because i somewhere realized that you know, uh i was not the only one who was going through that a lot of people were going through that maybe they didn't they didn't have the courage to opt out they didn't know what to do so they continued doing whatever job they were doing but i also knew that there are a lot of people who will walk after me on the same path i can help them do And that's how unlearn was born originally in 2012 we didn't shape up then and i dabbled in quite a few startups after that none of them shaped up the way i wanted them to and uh, then about uh, uh, two years ago my younger daughter started a non profit for children it's called uh, mahika mishra foundation and the initiative is get us for change it's a completely student run initiative for the last 13 months i interacted with close to i would say 600 students from all over india college students and that's when the idea of a learn got rekindled so for the last few months i have been working on setting this up and here we are talking yes sir um so that is uh, that is a really interesting uh, initiative um you took you opted out and well sir uh, it it was a, it, it is also an interesting initiative that you uh, gave your daughter um to start an ngo for children and that is really a noble cause and sir can you please uh, now sir can you please tell us about your deep why in life at what stage you are like and please tell us about the stage you are in right now in your journey of achieving this purpose so no i i didn't know there has to be a why in life i i was just doing things because they were supposed to be done and i didn't know the word passion for a very long time i didn't know the word purpose for a very long time i would just wake up every morning and take one day at a time and keep doing things the way they were supposed to be done then somewhere when i quit my job and i got into the entrepreneurial world is when i started focusing on trying to discover that what am i trying to do what is it that i want to achieve and deep inside i realized that i i want to help people do better that was that is what gives me good sleep when uh, when i work with people and help them lead better lives take better decisions and feel happy about themselves be proud about what they've decided and that that's the why now asking that where am i in this journey i would say i'm at the beginning of this journey right? i've just started now all the, all these years i was accumulating the 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 know how on how to embark you know it's like packing a suitcase 
uh, suitcase packing your bags before you leave for the airport at this point i am at the airport i would say um where that that is that is an interesting stage so you are you were just preparing um for the next stage of life now uh, until now and um that is uh, that is a very interesting perspective um sir i am keen to know uh, like uh, keen to know a, uh, like a bit deep about your startup journey um you uh, briefed us uh, about this before when and what like made you decide to take the plunge for startup okay so see when i quit my corporate job i realized that i was not making any significant change I, the, the conversations were same uh, days were same weeks were same months were same things were not changing that was not making me any richer in terms of experience monetarily yes i was probably making tons of money and uh, beyond a point it doesn't really uh, make you happy so i joined a startup spent uh, less than less than a year with them what i learned there was that commonality of vision understanding what somebody is trying to do and why they are trying to is very important and this made me believe that or this made me understand that it is very difficult to work in somebody else's startup because unless uh, you are a part of the vision unless they are able to explain you what they want you will not be making a meaningful contribution you will only continue to be like an employee which i didn't want that's when i started storing options that what can i do i have dabbled i would tell you 1 2 3 4 4 startups actually so the first one was unlearn when it started it didn't shape up the way i wanted to six months then i moved to something called unplanned where i was helping people travel to destinations which they would not know so it's like i would come to you i would interview you and i would understand what you want to do in life in, in terms of vacation and i would plan a vacation for you but i will not tell you where you are going and you will get to know of the vacation that destination only 12 hours before the journey so there was an element of surprise and adventure in that you would not know if you are going to goa you would not know if you are going to the jungles or the mountains or you know some beach side uh, resort or the desert uh, but i found that it was too early uh, people were not so adventurous and uh, yes, i was not getting as so i discontinued that then i worked in a startup then i set up something in the field of sports i have been a huge fan of sports all my life and i saw that there is a technology intervention that is possible in sports worked for about uh, two and a half years in that domain had the best time of my life met some of the best sports person in the country olympians uh, asian medal winners asian game players uh, national champions children uh, very young children you know preparing for uh, sports a career in sports uh, cricket players men and women uh, former cricket captains former volleyball captains basketball captains for india you know? matter of honor to spend time with them and meet them and listen to their stories but again the startup did not uh, shape up in terms of getting money so we had to close it down with a very heavy heart then i started something which uh, i am a traveler myself i drive a lot so i realized that when i drive when i when i'm crossing a river my gps tells me that there is there is a left turn and there is a right turn it shows me a river but it doesn't tell me a story of the so can i have a, an application which will start telling me stories of places i'm going along the way so imagine you're sitting in rajani express going from bombay to delhi and the application you turn on and it starts telling you that you're crossing the river namda it's it's only the second river on the indian subcontinent which flows from uh, east to west now it's the seventh largest river in india and so on it will suddenly make your journey interesting the train stops in the night at ratlam and the application tells you that you stopped at ratlam the stoppage is like 5 minutes and uh, the save here is very famous so you may get down and you may go to the platform to buy some ratlam is save now so that was the idea this application was called yavo we we ran it for about 2 years we couldn't get as many users as we wanted so again with a heavy heart we packed it then i helped my daughter set up her initiative and now i am working on it so that's been my journey um uh, sorry sir uh, you were saying now you are helping yeah, i i i was helping my daughter set up her uh, 
non-profit, which is kind of, you know, it's a student-run organization. Yes. It's largely done. I, I give about an hour a day to that organization, but the rest of my time is going and setting up. And that's where I am. Yes. Okay, sir. That uh, that is very interesting. You have done many startups. Ah, uh, well, uh, well, we see. Fa- well, failure is the building uh, block of life. You know, when we put bricks down, the foundation of when we make a house, the foundation of the house is actually failure. So it is. Ah, uh, it is very interesting. And you, 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 you might you have you had so much uh, like interesting experiences along your journey it uh, i am i am feeling envious <laughs> but everything uh, sir uh, it, it you whatever uh, it was very interesting to hear your story but please please tell us what risks did you consider while starting up for the first time and how did you manage them are there even before we uh, uh, to answer my i think my answer i want to tell you you know why is beyond you i am the one who is envious okay. i wish i was half as clever as you are <laughs> so coming back to my journey that what are the risks that i took when i was in work in the corporate world i used to think and i used to wonder who are these people who start a business who are these people who go on to you know take that risk of quitting a job and not getting a salary on a month on month basis and uh, start something which may or may not work it used to be scary very scary then it happened with me and when i took that plunge i realized that fear goes away you know the fear is only there till you are standing on the cliff once you jump off the cliff i <laughs> you feel joy <laughs> joy exactly then you fly even if you're going down you feel joy in my journey i've been going down i have not yet taken the flight as i told you i'm at the airport so but there's no fear and uh, the risk is only till you walk up to that moment once you've taken the plunge then it's all fun then it's all joy yes sir If anybody is watching this and uh, wanting to be an entrepreneur, my advice to them will be that take the plunge. It's a it's a beautiful journey. If nothing, you can always go back. You know the beauty of yes. this journey is that once you take a plunge, it's not that you've gone down and you can never come back from the valley. You can always come back. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, sir, that uh, that was really deep and. uh it was very interesting well actually uh see when when you're on a roller coaster it is like that only when you are on the top you were just about to come down you feel scared but when you come down you feel so much like you have joy and then you go up so it's 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 ne- it's necessary in every life you have to fall but you should always learn how to get up if you don't get up then that then you will never succeed in life so Yeah. Sir, wh- why? When did you decide to like quit, and why? What was the reason behind quitting your job and going into the startup land? <laughs> okay, so I had I had two particular reasons of quitting my job. One was that I realized that I was not learning anything significant, and I was not. Uh, my days were same; they were not changing. My Monday to Friday. And my first to thirty first, and my January to December, it was just the same. There was hardly any conversation that was new. So it's like reading the same book again and again. It's like being in the same class, you know, doing the seventh class again and again. Then beyond a point, you get bored. So what am I doing? That was one. The second thing, which was uh, very really interesting, was the traffic. So there was a period when a lot of construction work was going on in Mumbai. It still is. But uh, back then, when I quit, I was spending almost three to four hours in traffic. And I was like, "What am I doing with my life? Four hours in traffic? Is this what I want to do? Is this the good life that I moved for? You know, from my hometown to Mumbai, to spend four hours in traffic. In four hours, you can reach to Pune. But four hours, you can a little more than four hours, you can drive up to Surat. And here, I am traveling from Prabhadevi to Gopurakshpa. So I said, "No, I am not doing this anymore." And that's when I walked out. Yes, sir. Um, it 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 becomes when you eat like too much of something, it becomes bland, and you do not find the taste in it. So you should experience 
as many things you can because you have one life and in this one life you if you only go on one wavelength then you will not understand the whole world you have to look from different perspectives first you were looking from the job perspective that world is only for money and only like living your life but when you go like come from the startup pr- perspective you think how can i help others how can i how can i think about others and that's when you innovate and then life will pull you ahead only so sir that that was very really interesting to hear well sir what lovely. were the key learnings uh, uh, sorry that's lovely that's that's very wise well sir what were the key learnings which you derived like from your first entrepreneur entrepreneurial stint okay so um uh, uh, you know the learnings are very very simple so the first learning was the first startup was that i i was doing a startup because i thought i should and there's a need for that. i didn't listen to the customer i didn't find out that what the customer needs that was the first learning then when i started my second one which was the one in sports a third one actually then uh, you know usual excitement what you do is to say that let's set up an application let's let's get a domain name let's let's do everything you know let's get the brand let's get the logo let's get a card let's get a letter head so you you fall in the usual stuff because that's what you see in the corporate world but that was wrong what we needed was customers i had customers everything else would fall in place now that was another learning then when i started the next one which was yaro we went very slow we didn't do any of these things we focused on customers and uh, when we were trying to get customers we realized that our product was not communicating with the customers we were not creating that reason for them to come in so we were not able to communicate that this is a product which will help you lead a better life so customers are you know very clever they're very smart they will only buy something they will only pay for something when they think it adds value if it's not adding value to them they don't want it however good it may be it may be the best jalebi out there but if a customer is not hungry they will not buy it this was another learning that I had. so with all these learnings now i am at the airport for anla and i know that i am not doing any of these mistakes or uh, there are newer mistakes that i'll make yes sir well in in life there are many mistakes but if you learn from your mistakes if you if you if you build up on them then you will there will be a future well there where there will be no failure so sir um that uh, please tell us about how did your second startup journey go and and how did the first like first startup journey help you because you told about the st- third one but not the second one the second one i told you was the unplanned where i was helping customers uh, uh, travel to a place which they were not aware of and uh, they were not many takers for so i did not listen to my customer i did not pay attention to what my customer was seeking i may have found 50 people 100 people but you can't run a business with just 1500 customers unless probably you are making shifts or aeroplanes i was not in that business so i i needed a lot of customers thousands of customers and i didn't have those thousands of customers that's when i realized that this is maybe this is something very good i like it but not everybody is enjoying this so let's not do that yes sir um please can you tell me uh, can you please give me uh, like some wisdom tips can you share with us from like all of these experiences you had during your startup journey what is the crux of it and what is the wisdom tip okay so the first thing i would say is that not everyone has to do a startup we need a lot of employees and a lot of people are needed to run our banks and insurance companies and automobile companies and you know all the businesses out we need those people if everybody becomes an entrepreneur then imagine what will happen to the world so don't feel that uh, i am not an entrepreneur my friend is an that's why i should be that's one the second thing i'll tell is that don't be an entrepreneur just because you want to be it's very very fancy it's like saying that everybody is having that uh, 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 say a chocolate chip ice cream. I should also have that chocolate chip ice cream. No, don't have it. Have it only if you want to. 
if you prefer a mango, have a mango ice cream. Just because all your friends are having a chocolate chip ice cream does not mean that you also go and have a chocolate chip ice cream. And a lot of people feel this pressure. He, uh, my friends are doing a startup and I am the one who is not. Don't do it because of that. Do it because you believe that you can make a better life for yourself and people around you by doing a startup. So these are the only two things actually. Yes, sir. Um, that uh, that is very interesting. Uh, now let's let's like go on from the startup world, and uh, let's let's understand uh, more about skills and values. So, sir, what do you think is missing in our school and college system, and does this anywhere relate with the problem which you are solving for youth through like through your third startup, Earn Learn? Sorry, fifth startup and then. So, uh, Aditya, it's uh, I don't say anything is missing in us because I'm a product of that. I've gone through the same school. I've gone through the same college. What can be done better is that learning can be made fun. So I had some teachers, and I'm sure you also had some teachers who made learning fun for you. So there was a teacher, uh, and I was only talking about him a few days ago. Unfortunately, he passed away. I, I would have loved to meet him now. He was my teacher in class six and seven, Sir V. B. Thomas, and uh, he made physics fun for me. And when I understood what physics is, I started enjoying it. So in class eight, nine, tenth, eleventh, and thereafter, I really enjoyed studying physics. Similarly, there was a teacher who made math fun for me, and I started enjoying math. There was a teacher who made English fun for me, and I started enjoying English. There was another teacher in class ten who made Hindi fun for me. You know, Hindi is such a simple subject; otherwise, just language. You read chapters and you read poems. But this teacher made it fun. So I would say that what is missing is that students are too focused, and teachers are also too focused, and that system is too focused on you know trying to produce results. In the process, people are forgetting that these 15, 18 years that you put in the schooling and college system, you also need to have fun. So if you introduce that element of fun, life will be good. Yes, yes, sir. Well, every and not only study, sir. Uh, you're talking about if you introduce an element of fun in everything, um, then everything will become easy. um there is when you do your, when you do something that you want it is fun for you that's why you are you are able to do it uh, like in a very good yes. manner so it just matters what you do is what you like you should never do something which you don't like and something that does not meet with your understandings so that is what i understood sir um i am just uh, summarizing what you said and sir what are the key skills which you consider you should like focus upon to build like uh, build and like lead the le- lead and solve the future challenges in this world the first skill that we need to have is curiosity yes everybody and not just everybody should be curious everybody should try and find out why things are happening what is happening there's so much information available around us you know there's this device that i keep nowadays called the phone when i was a kid we didn't have something like this now i can move my fingers on this and i can have everything at my disposal you and i can do so much earlier i had to go to a library to find information if i had to. i had to open you know an encyclopedia britannica to search and that was only google at that to be curious that's the first thing i would say The second thing I would say is that try to learn to communicate. Try to learn to talk to people. Because if you can't express your ideas, if you can't express what you have in your heart, what you want, what you want to do, then then it doesn't really help. You know, an idea in your head which has not come out is not going to change the world. The idea has yes. to come out. And yes, I see. I'm, I'm seeing that you are you are an excellent communicator. So congratulations for that. Well, the, the sir. Third skill, uh, I, yeah. Please. Yes, 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 sir. I was saying that uh, 
creativity uh, create you said cu- cur- curiosity is also very important yes sir if you are not cur- uh, like if you are not curious then you will never discover new things in life and you will always as i said you will always get the bland texture in your life and you will never have something fun to do and uh, next you said communication communication is very important and these uh, both and like all these skills you are talking about they are essential to become an excellent person and a, and a person who is like who is successful in life so thank you sir and you were continuing sir i was just saying a third skill the third skill is that able to empathize with people the, the ability to understand people around me. now if i am ignorant of what people around me are feeling then i can't be a good person i should know what my what people around me are feeling if i am not able to relate with them then i am not being a nice person so these are the three skills i would say yes sir um you uh, so empathizing uh, empathizing curiosity and and then the communication these three skills are the skills so said so my viewers please keep these skills in your mind to succeed in life because these are mainly the most important skills if you are not curious enough then you cannot succeed in life because you do not have enough uh, you cannot you do not you cannot under, you cannot uh, explore and understand more things and you will just remain uh, remain at the uh, like same level throughout your life and you should always be an excellent communicator and an empathizer then you will become a good leader so sir thank you for sharing those skills they were really interesting and sir now i would like to ask how is unlearn helping youngsters to see through these noise like there is so much noise there is uh, there is uh, mobiles there is laptops there is everything every pe- children uh, children are distracted by so many things these days so how do you help them to see through the noise and uh, gain clarity about career planning and other matters Uh, I am surprised by the so he had to unlearn. I I believe in a simple principle which I have followed in my life. You know, my parents used to tell me when I was young, when I was your age, "Beta jaldi ho jao, wake up early." The other thing that they would tell me is, "Padne baad jao, study study hard." But I never did these things. Every morning they used to. Is that you haven't woken up, uthe nahi abhi tak. If I would get an opportunity to sleep, I would sleep for two hours extra, an hour extra. And on Sundays, I would want to sleep till like ten o'clock. But my father, my mother would be there from seven in the morning, you know, trying to wake me up. And similarly, they used to tell me, "Padhai karlo, padhai karlo." So if I would be watching TV, they would come and look at me and say, "How how many hours have you been watching TV? Why don't you go and study?" If I would be reading a comic book, if I would be reading a Uh, a story book they would come and tell me enough of this now go and read i realized when i look back that so many years of them telling me to wake up early and so many years of them been telling me to study did not actually make me do that i studied only when i felt like studying i woke up only when i felt like waking up yes now, this is the learning that i do when i engage with people i don't tell them what i help i help understand that what is it that they want once we yes, find sir. it out that what is it they want, i help them find a way of it. yes actually because uh, it's very easy yeah yeah please i'm just saying sir? it's very for me to yeah. come and say and look and say that hey you should do this and your life will be great but life doesn't work like that they need to find out what they want to do they need to find out what they are good at they need to find out what they, what makes them happy and then do it that's what i think yes um that is uh, that is very interesting when when people have expectations for you uh, you uh, you, you uh, at le- and then you just like your your dreams your everything is masked then they try to but uh, 
well what happens when when a parent or someone or a someone influential in your life comes and says you to do something become an engineer become an etc 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 you you become an engineer but after that you are confused what should you want to do you what do you want to do and even if you do not become an engineer you do not get enough time to think what you actually want to be so it is very confusing uh, this times so it is a very good uh, endeavor you have to make clarity and because every uh, kids around that age are so much confused and well sir thank you for sharing that thank you well how should anyone like who need your sir like needs your support through a, like through the unlearn platform approach you and what should like what sh- services should they expect okay so my website is currently being redone it's partly there so it should be there ready in another few days also i am present on linkedin these are the two ways of connecting with me my website is unlearn.co and my linkedin profile is just dushyan prashram uh what can they expect from me so i definitely uh, can tell you that i don't prescribe i don't tell what to eat i ask people what do they want to eat. and then i tell them that how can they get that i know so if somebody comes and says that hey i want to have something sweet and i'm confused that what do i eat then i ask them so okay do you want to have something which has got sugar syrup in it do you want to have something which is fried do you want to have something which is hard you know i have those conversations with them and finally it comes out that they actually want to have say for example a bundi ka ladoo is what they want to have i say fine if that's what you want to have this is a shop you should go go find a shop and have that and people suddenly feel happy because what yes. they had was they had a conclusion that what do i eat and they wanted to have something sweet but they weren't sure so that's what i helped them yes um that uh, that is uh, really interesting and uh, you summarized just in a very good way uh, so if anybody wants to visit uh, sir's website i will put it in the i will put your linkedin uh, id uh, like your dis, uh, like uh, link and your website's link in the description below so feel free to take check that out because he is really doing a great job and uh, sir please uh, yeah thank you yes sir um certainly well fear is also like one of uh, the emotion which stops like most kids from like taking chances and exploring various possibilities um how how do we handle fear in our lives because see fear uh, the only time you should not have fear in your life is during your young age because you are free you do not have any responsibilities you can adventure you can explore it is it is harder to do a startup or something like that or take a risk in your old age because you have family you have risk but if you if you are a young person there is no issues you have your parents and you can you, you can do whatever you want so um please tell us and then they do not do it because they have fear so please tell us how to solve this major issue from our life Aditya, that's a very, very interesting thing, and I'll share something here. So the young feel that I should be able to uh, start a startup or start a business when I am on this side of forty, when I am forty-three, forty-five, somewhere there, because then I would have earned some money, then I would have uh, built a bank balance, then I would have learned something at work, I would have experience. That's what the uh, young feel. That's what the twenty-two-year-olds feel. where is the 45 year olds think that you know the time to start is when you are 22 because there is no responsibility you can just start there is nothing to lose and uh, if if you earn great if you don't earn then also it's fine because you can still sleep uh, probably with your parents or you can still put up with your friends and you, your needs are not very much why i am telling you this is because there is this saying old saying which says that the grass is greener on the other side everybody thinks that the other person is more qualified or the other person is more equipped to start a business they think my life is not for that bad. i have a lot of responsibilities i am not equipped to do that everybody thinks that that's a fear now how do you overcome this no there is no injection there is no you know there is no pill that i can give there is no prescription that i can write that tomorrow onwards you will not have fear 
I wish there was something like that. The only way to get over fear is to remember your childhood when you learned cycling. You know, all of us learned how to walk, but when we learned to walk, we were we were too young to remember. We fell, we broke our knees, you know, we hurt our knees, we hurt our hands, but we don't remember that. But all of us remember when we learned how to ride the bicycle. We were about five, six, seven years of age. And that's when you learn that small bicycle that comes. And we remember how our elbows got bruised, how our knees got bruised, how we fell, how we you know, fell in a ditch, how we hit a tree, we couldn't break. You know, all those accidents we remember. Some were good, some were bad, some were terrible. But they are memories. And it's after all those accidents that we learned how to ride a cycle. And learning a cycle also led us to help us ride a motorbike or a scooter. And riding a motorbike or a scooter also helped us ride a car, drive a car. It all goes back to that cycle that we got. So if a person can learn how to ride a cycle, then you can learn how to start a business. <laughs> Here is saying. Yes, uh, everything uh, is same only. Um, that uh, that is very interesting perspective, sir. Well, um.